Hi guys, it's Summers here and welcome to another episode of my On The Road Career Mode series with Warsaw. We're straight into the action uh, with a home game here against South End and as you can see they've already uh, gone ahead with a 7th minute goal from Kitely. Uh, let's hope we can get back on into this one. Making some substitutions and Hooper puts them further ahead on the 49th minute with another goal. Cook gets us back in it on the 88th minute with a goal, but unfortunately it's not enough and we go down 2-1 to safe end. And we go straight out to the first played game of the episode, so as you know we're on the road at Adams Park against Wickham Please make some noise and welcome our visitors Walsall and your Wickham Wanderers. So let's have a look who we've got in this team. We've got Cunningham playing at right back, Sangar and Paz at the rest of the defence, with the Academy Wise. We've got Newman in the middle. Uh, and that's about it really. We've got quite a few substitutions uh, in place, or substitutes in place, should I say, uh, Youth Academy Wise, but we're having to play um, more of the Warsaw players in this particular game, just purely down to the fact that We've got quite a lot of fatigue going on. Looking into the box there, it was close with the diving header. Newman pushes the ball on. Through ball, doesn't quite get there. Parker with a through ballish Malzin. Keeper's made a really good save though. Gordon holding the ball up, Bell manages to find Newman. Back into Parker. Parker over to Gordon. Gordon with a shot and we've gone 1-0 up just on the stroke of half time. Really good team play get there from, from the Warsaw players. Got that ball in and it's really held up really well by Parker who manages to shuffle it across to, to uh, Gordon and Gordon gets the strike away. Lovely finish past the keeper. Ginnelly, lovely run here by Gordon. Cuts inside. Can he find a man? Oh, so unlucky there trying to get the ball across to Parker. We can come forward. Oh, a lovely shot there from distance. Knock the ball back here. Chewy knocks it out. Managed to get that over the top here. Lovely through ball to Gordon. Oh, yes. Cheek as you like. What a lovely finish there by Gordon. Chipped the onrushing keeper. Dink. Think. What a great finish by Gordon. And his second of the game. So that's how it's finished at Wickham. We've managed to beat them 2 0. And a really good performance all round. But Gordon, that was exceptional in that game, getting two for us. He got a nine for his efforts and man of the match. Uh, Cissé got 6.3. Willems got a 7.8, uh, uh, Sangar sorry, with 7.6, Paz with a 7.7, uh, a good all round performance really, especially as we had a lot of players playing out of position let's say, and that's a good training uh, scenario set up as well, Cissé, Murphy, Staunton and Quinn all going up by one overall. So move out to the next game and it's a home one, we're facing off against Peterborough in a simmed game. Straight away Peterborough onto the score sheet with uh, a goal after two minutes. Kinsella getting himself a booking. Out through to the second half. Hopefully we can manage to get a goal. Now as O'Hara gets a second for Peterborough. Uh, 
and QER gets one right on the end of the game on the 90th minute but obviously it's not enough to get us back into it and we lose 2-1 to Peterborough and as we can see here or as I can see here we've had the overall one the, the one overall glitch affect us there because Quinn had actually gone up um, to 65 and he's back on 64 uh, last scout reporting from Italy so we're going to sign up Lombardi to the Youth Academy he's got a potential of 73 to 89 uh, Esposito didn't have a high enough potential so we've let him go we've got Col the Colombo brothers here um, Francesco he's worth 90,000 then we've got Francesco Romano worth 170,000 we're going to sign him up to the Youth Academy. He has a potential of 71 to 94 and he should be quite a decent acquisition. If we want to take any more players into the Youth Academy at this stage, we're going to have to either promote somebody to the youth, from the Youth Academy to the main squad or let somebody go. Uh, so we're having a look who we could possibly promote at this stage. Or with release even. Uh, so Oliver Lee isn't really making any progress and we've decided to release him from the academy. He had a potential of 74 to 80 but having put some training into him he just wasn't making a drastic amount of progress like we'd really like. Toss up here between several players as to who you could actually promote into the main team as well because there's quite a number of players that are showing decent, uh, decent gains. Going to reject Colombo, I think, because he's 15 years of age. He'll spawn between 39 to 51, and although he has the higher potential of the two uh, Colombo brothers, um, I think Francesco might actually be the better option. So he signed Francesco Colombo. He's got a potential of between 64 to 86, and hopefully he will um, serve us well. As we move out to Sweden, see who we've actually got on this list that's ever any talent whatsoever because we've been pretty unlucky so far in terms of uh, anybody that we've found. Uh, I think we've got one player so far at the Swedish bunch which has uh, managed to come to something. Yeah, and we're getting more of the same really here. Down to the last two players with any t decent potential. We've got London uh, that, that we're going to try to get into the squad uh, just based on the fact that his overall potential is quite high. I think it's time to promote Casey Quinn. Uh, he's worth £700,000 and has a potential of 80 to 90 and can play at either centre back or right back even though he's left footed. So we've signed uh, Magnus London. Uh, has a potential of 66 to 90. Hopefully that uh, 90 is the region that we're heading for, but uh, as we know, that doesn't always tend to be the case. As we head out to the scout report from Scotland, get rid of McKeith, and uh, we'll get rid of McCall. Angus Anderson, worth £140,000, has an overall between 49 and 65. We'll keep an eye on him going into the next... Uh, month as we head out to the next game of the episode obviously we're on the road and it's kind of a derby game here against Shrewsbury at the New Meadow okay in our lineup we've got Quinn at right back Sangar and Pazir in the middle with Peters at left side we've got Newman in the middle with Cunningham and uh, that's it for the youth academy players. And we'll try and get some more into the lineup as we go. Thank you. Enjoy the game. Shrewsbury with the first real attack of the game. Truly was offside there, but he's dragged the ball over. Right Side, managing to get work some space into the box. Oh, we don't get that ball away, and Shrewsbury have gone one ahead. And goal. Trying to 
catch him out with a trailing leg there uh, with, a, with a tackle but nothing going and ball comes across to Angola and he just smashes it in. Leaves us chasing this game as we knock the ball out to the wide right and we've managed to get that ball back out there again and it's Newman on the ball going to knock this inside slightly, knocks it into the box, I was so unlucky there with that effort, defender just manages to scramble it away, pick up a book in there for Torben Newman for that challenge. We're getting away on the attack there and we managed to get the block off and another great save from Chewy on the follow-up as well. Dobson, through ball through the centre to Gingerley. We've got some space out wide but we just can't feed it through to Ferrier. Dobson picks the ball up on the edge of the box. Lob through ball, Ferrier will chase that. Plenty of pace from the striker, not comes back inside. Manages to find Newman on the edge of the box, who also finds Cunningham, but what a terrible, terrible effort there. Shrewsbury coming forward towards the end of this game. Nice as they knock it around. Manages to find some space on the edge of the box, gets the shot away, but it's not good enough, and we knock the ball away. But we've gone 1 0 down to Shrewsbury. Another poor result coming into the tail end of this season. And you have to feel that having so many youth academy players in the squad is really starting to take its toll on some of the performances. Um, 7 for Peters, Paz, 6.4 for Sangar, 6.7 for Queen, 6.6 for Newman and a 6.8 for Cunningham. As we move out to another training scenario, and Quinn once again goes back up to 65. I wonder if he'll retain that going into the next training session. Here we go. And he is on 65, luckily enough. So we're going to push on with that training as we watch Staunton go up to 53 and Cissé hit 60. And yet another training episode. I'm going to swap Cissé. Got a few players here in the Youth Academy that might uh, do well to get some extra training under their belt. The first one being Alessio Lombardi, who we've recently signed. No overall growth that time around from any of the players, but still a decent um, haul in terms of their potential going up. Okay, so Philip Campbell has requested that he be promoted to the senior team. He is worth £375,000 and does have a decent potential at 72 to 86 so I see no reason not to promote him to the squad um, as an additional player at least. And then we also have the same request from Lombardi. Um, his potential at the moment um, doesn't suggest that he's going to be absolutely bonkers amazing but I think we'll get him out on a loan deal um, he's gone up to 55 overall in this training session and Campbell's gone up to 61 overall so that's at least a, a decent haul for uh, them at this stage as we get a youth scout report in. This one coming from Sean King and as we can see we've got a few players on this particular list that might be of interest so we're going to reject a, a few of those players based on the fact that obviously they don't meet our requirements but looking at uh, Rob McKinley there he, he might well fit with our criteria. We've then got Alistair Young, a 15 year, age, year of age player which we've rejected. Same for Angus McKenzie. And uh, Shane Mitchell here, we're just taking a quick look at Angus Anderson. He's 18 years of age and worth £140,000. We're going to sign him up to the Youth Academy um, because I think with that kind of valuation, he's worth taking a punt on it quite early on. We'll sign up Shane Mitchell. Uh, he also has a decent enough potential for us to consider him part of the Youth Academy at least. And then Rob McKinley's going to mean that we're going to have to uh, shift somebody upstairs or let somebody go. 
uh, at this stage I think we'll probably be promoting somebody to the youth academy somebody that's shown decent potential in order that we can try and get them into the, the team in a, in a rotation capacity and the person for that is a person here from uh, Sweden uh, their winger should provide us with some extra cover in the youth, in, sorry, in the main squad. So that means now that we've got Rob McKinley uh, promoted to the full team. Sorry, not the full team, he's gone to the youth academy even. Uh, anyway, let's move on to some training and we're going to swap out Staunton. Uh, he is not progressing quite as rapidly as we would like, so we're going to add in one of the players perhaps that we've just signed up. Or we'll try to make some improvements to a uh, person here. Uh, worth £250,000 as a right winger. And uh, I'm hoping he can you know, bolster the, the squad uh, going forward. Quinn there going up to a 67. So that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel for more FIFA 2019 content. Don't forget about the FIFA vs Career Mode series as well, which is going along quite nicely in FIFA 15 at the moment in preparation for the switch over to FIFA 16. Uh, in terms of our Warsaw career here, you can see that we've perhaps not achieved the goals that we set out to in this first season. But I do think we've kind of accrued quite the decent youth academy squad and I hope that will carry us well into season two.